Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Trinity Worship Service. We are so glad that you have joined us. You will notice once again that we are missing one person. Pastor Shannon is unable to be here. Um, we miss her, but uh, we also understand, you know, us pastors have this thing called obligations or meetings or something, but um, she's unable to record with us today. But we are so grateful that you are here, and we just pray that you uh, feel God's presence once again. Know that you are loved and he desires a relationship with you. I am joined here at the United Methodist Church with Pastor Jill. Good morning. And we always have, or usually have, Sheila who plays wonderful music. I mean, we can't, I mean, I can't play a tune or even hardly sing a tune. So we are so grateful to have her talent here with us today. So let us go ahead and begin with Shirley the Presence. God's ways of living and loving, so that we may witness to that love and grace. We gather to worship our wise and holy God. We are in awe and revere you for your saving works. We come together to seek your blessing, O God. Praise be to our generous and just God. Amen. Confession and assurance. God of all saints, God of all sinners, hear our prayer. We would be saint-like, holy, good, patient, loving. But we end up feeling more like sinners, full of failures and immorality, selfish, mean. Perhaps you see us simply as human, as beloved and flawed and trying and failing and succeeding. In all of this, forgive the wrong that we have done and bless the good we have accomplished. Keeping on loving us and helping us, molding us more and more into the image of Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Friends, hear this good news. The love of God is beyond measure, and you are included in that love. Know that you are forgiven and thus set free to love and serve. Hallelujah, amen. Well, we continue our study of the Psalms. And we are on, uh, I don't know, sometimes that time after Pentecost, you know. <laughs> yeah. you it keeps it. going it's and a, going. Yeah, the 21st <laughs> Sunday after Pentecost. No, it's, it's not, but it just seems like it, as you said, just goes and goes. <laughs> but we are, we are um, over the summer, we are studying the Psalms, and so that, that time will be coming to an end. But today we're looking at Psalm 67, and we're looking at verses 1 through 7. The nations are called to praise God. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, Shelah, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth, Shelah. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
Oh, as I've said before, a whole lot of praise going on here. <laughs> it is, it is, and it's a global scope. Global nations. You know, last week we used nations. I think this can be described as global blessing. Yeah. It's not about one person or two people, but it extends to all people. Um, the call to praise, the God's sovereignty, the cry of God's grace. I mean, it's all in there. Um, it's a very common benediction that we hear. Also, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, you know, may the Lord bless you. May keep God you. be, yeah. May, may His face shine, shine upon, upon you and be gracious to you. Mm -hmm. uh, those yeah. words are written other other places in within the Bible, but this text is a reflection of that. So, yeah. 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 Very, very common language again. But you're right, it is global. It, this has nothing to do with, you know, last week it was, um, what, when was it written before or after the Babylonian exile? And this is all about just let all the peoples praise it. It's a, as you said, it's a global initiative. And God's blessings, I mean, God's love, God's forgiveness, God's grace is to be shared. We are not just to keep it for ourselves. It is the blessings that he gives God where we can, where people can see God in us, where people can see Christ in us. I mean, it, you know, we are to serve, and we're supposed to be a testimony to his character so that people can see Christ. So the cry for God's grace, you know, in the first, among all nations, once again, the global, everybody is to receive it. And, you know, people can do that you know, in so many ways. Um, so people can see that that Christ is is in us. So they can feel God's love and they can feel, you know, it's seeing God's face in everybody. And how are we to respond to that? Because there's even a, there's <laughs> even directions on how you are to respond to that. If you look yes. at verse four, it's let the nations be glad and sing for joy. You know, so that's how we are to respond, to be glad and to sing for joy. And and then there is, and it, if you don't believe that, you know, it's kind of like, <laughs> if you don't believe that part, listen to this, for you judge the peoples with equity. And isn't that all that any of us wants? We yes. want to be treated with equity, yeah, with equity. I, I heard of, I think I've mentioned it before, I, I heard a very, wise man speak one time and he said, you know, equality is when you have a room full of people and you give them all a free pair of tennis shoes and they're all a size 10. You know, yeah, everybody got a free pair of tennis shoes, but true equity is when everyone in the room gets a free pair of tennis shoes and they're the correct size for everyone in the room. So I can't wear a size 10, give me an eight and a half and I'll be happy. So you know, I get my eight and a half, that is true and that is all that we ask as people. And, and when God does that, He does that. He treats us all with equity. We are to sing with joy mm -hmm. and praise Him. Mm -hmm. And then, like we talked last week, the bountiful harvest is also in there. There's something about harvest <laughs> that God has that He wants us to see. You he know. has that true connection with creation. You know that, mm -hmm. and it's you got to talk in, in the terms of that the people understand, and and they understand. Yes, harvest. the harvest. Yep. Yes, and yeah, and the, the land that, that yields its produce, and the psalmist envisions a spiritual harvest. Yes, he envisions people coming to God once again or returning to God. He envisions that. He sees that with blessings and singing and and the awe of God, I guess you could say, the awe that we see in God so people can see see God, you know. The and, true majesty and, 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 yeah, and the power. Yeah, yeah. All of that. And I I I do I I like that the earth has yielded its increase. Um, our God has blessed us. Mm -hmm. He yes. has provided everything that is good will come. It's ongoing. God's ongoing blessing 
the purpose, the fear that we have. But I mean, it's not the fear that we think that we should be scared of the Lord. It's, you know, God will provide. We have to have that faith. We have to have that tr trust that is solid because, you know, we are on solid ground. When we are on solid ground, God provides each and every time. I, I think sometimes that, that um, I mean, adults, sometimes kids do get kind of wrapped up in that word, um, fear the Lord. And I, I like to explain it as, you know, you see somebody do something, you know, you're watching, you're watching football on Sunday afternoon and some athlete makes an incredible catch or a basket or a goal or something, does something incredible. And you are in awe of that talent, in awe of what just happened. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. fear of God. You are in awe of oh, the okay. power of God. If you think about it, we should be in awe all the time. I mean, yeah. you know, anybody that looks around in creation and says, how'd that fish get there and not on the ground, you know, <laughs> that's pretty incredible mm -hmm. that God would know that. Because, yeah, we can experience God anywhere, anytime, anyplace. I mean, He's everywhere. And when you experience that, you you have that peace that everything is going to work out. Um, you know, God will provide. He always does. And the psalm talks about that, the, the blessing and the awe of God that um, He is with us. Always will be, never will leave nor forsake, will walk with us and before us. And so, you know, let us experience that, you know. Take time to experience that, because that just gives you peace of, you know, wake up in the morning and hear the birds. I mean, right there, God is there, you know, in, in everything He provides. Now, the thing is, He provides, but it may not be in our time. <laughs> so, that's true. It's in his timing. That's so that's what true. we wrestle with a lot because you pray over and over again and you thank him and you praise him and, and then you, you um, he already knows our hearts so you're not like you're hiding anything. He knows our doubts, he knows our questions, he knows everything about us. You're not going to hide from God, but God desires to hear from us. I was just going to say, you are once again talking about it's a, that relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. we, that's, a, that's awe inspiring itself that you can have a relationship with God and then sing. Sing for joy. Sing for joy. Yep. Yeah. So, anything else? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There you Amen. go. Let's sing for joy. Okay. This is a really familiar hymn that we're, I think it is anyway. What a friend we have in Jesus. And if you've got a Methodist hymnal, it's number 526. And two verses. Mm -hmm.
Now it is time for prayer as prayers of the people and then we'll end with the Lord of prayer. Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, forgiver of our many sins, set our minds on heavenly things. Fill us with your joy. Heavenly Father, when we are in distress, remind us of your Son, who makes room for us in this world and the next. Set our minds on heavenly things. Fill us with your joy. Holy Spirit, help us love being a child of God, for there is no higher calling. Set our minds on heavenly things. Fill us with your joy. When we are startled and terrified by your unexpected presence, Lord Jesus Christ, help us hear your word of peace. Touch us as we seek to touch you. Set our minds on heavenly things. Fill us with your joy. You know the names of those around us who are hungry for your touch, ready for your healing, or nearing the new life. Be with them and fill them with your peace. Set our minds on heavenly things. Fill us with your joy. Help us to listen closely to your word and hear your love in your words, even as you listen closely to our prayers. This we pray in the name of the one who is your peace, your salvation, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now it is time to give back to God what God has given us through our offering. Our, your offering could be your presence, your offering could be... A monetary gift we have so many ways to give back because um, there's so many ways that we can give back to our community and give it so we can see the abundance that God gives us each and every day because God blesses us in so many ways one way is the Edith's house the food pantry um, you can give up your time there it's opened on Mondays from 3 to 5 so if you feel the nudge to volunteer and help pass out the food, you are welcome. Um, you can also send a monetary gift to Edith's house. Edith's house. Uh, and you can send that to the Lutheran Church at 401 D Street, and we'll get it to the right place. And also, Minister Alliance is very big in our community and provides for so many services that people need from medications to even glasses um, to utilities to rent and you can also give to that and you can send those uh, checks put in the memo ministerial alliance to the united methodist church at 400 c street and we will get it in that account so that we can give it back to our community. Um, also, you can give to um, each of our churches. You can give to the United Methodist Church at 400 C Street. You can give to the Lutheran Church, 401 D Street. Or the Presbyterian Church, you can contact their treasurer, Susan Kiesacker. Okay, so is there anything else that I left out? I think I have it all. So let's go ahead and say a prayer of thanksgiving over the offering. Most gracious God, who gives the fruits of the earth for the benefit of all your created creatures, we give thanks to you for your abundant harvest and plentiful food. We pray for those in our land who are denied these gifts and seek your forgiveness for our complicity in their want. We thank you for our government designed to be responsible to the will of the governed and for the choices that, ours, that are ours in this land of opportunity. We pray for those whose voices are not heard and for those who do not hear. Forgive us when our choices are selfish ones and forgive us especially when we do not choose to raise our own voice against the pain of those among us who suffer, suffer needless wants. Most of all, God, we give you thanks for the revelation of your love in Jesus Christ, 
who came that everyone might have abundant life. Amen. And now receive this benediction. May God show kindness and bless us and make his face shine on us. Then the earth will acknowledge your ways and all nations your power to save. Let the nations praise you, God. Let all the nations praise you. Amen.